Good morning. Hope you're off to a good one and enjoying your brew, whatever it is. That one's gonna last me all day. My doctor says, how many cups of coffee do you have? I say two, but I don't tell them how big they are. <laughs> so, so glad that you're here. And uh, what a week. It's been a fantastic week weather-wise and I hope you've enjoyed it. I know uh, we have as a family enjoyed getting out, doing a few things and uh, thankful for that and I uh, hope you're well, feeling good and uh, praise the Lord for all his goodness and there's many things to be thankful for. Uh, let's keep in mind as well that uh, tomorrow EJ and uh, Becca get married so we're excited about that. Wish we were there uh, and enjoying the festivities but uh, at any rate uh, I'm, I know it's online so you can check it out tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so let's be in prayer for them, excited for them. And then let's be praying for uh, Violetta and Fernando. Uh, they're uh, on their way there now. Uh, just talking to uh, Violetta a few moments ago in Detroit. Uh, they're flying down. And so let's be in prayer for them as they fly. And then to enjoy time together uh, and this celebration. So uh, keep keep them in your prayers. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, Continuing our series on people who've uh, faced quarantine or at least some sort of hardship, uh, isolation, and uh, the story of Joseph comes to mind. I have to be honest, on Thursday night when Brother Mackey started talking about Joseph, I got a little concerned. I thought he might steal my uh, thunder as such, uh, but some couple of other ideas that he did not mention. Uh, he spent a lot of time in isolation. I mean, he was in a pit for a while, and his brothers threw him in. And, all right, something happened there. Uh, so uh, there was a slave, less freedom. Then he was a prisoner, which was even less again. Uh, so he went through some things. Uh, so Genesis chapter 37. Jonathan, Genesis ch uh, chapter 37 and verse number 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Let's look to the Lord in prayer before we go any further. Dear Jesus, thank you for another day you've given to us. And Lord, I pray you encourage us now this time in your word. Some principles that I believe will be encouragement to us. Uh, Lord, thank you for your goodness. I pray that you would continue to watch over those who are serving us, the healthcare professionals, frontline workers. Be with our leaders too. Lord, help them to make wise decisions. And Lord, help us to have good testimonies through this all. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see Joseph went through some pain, some suffering, some hardship, but that pain and hardship really helped him in the future. So, unfortunately, we just read that Joseph was the favored son. Now, if you're the only son, you can be the favored son. But there was a whole lot of other sons in this family, and it caused jealousy. It caused some major problems. And it was because he was uh, Joseph was of Jacob's true love, Rachel. And... Uh, when, those, when his brothers saw him get that coat of many colors, they probably looked at their own and said, what's this? Like, we got junk and he gets the best. Uh, so jealousy built up, eventually overcame them. They grabbed Joseph, throw him in the pit. They actually thought about killing him at first. Uh, but then they said, no, nah, no, nah, let's not do that. So they sold him. Uh, talk about the end of a childhood, right, of innocency. I mean, my goodness. Now Joseph belongs to foreign people and who paid for him, he's a slave. Uh, Genesis chapter 39 uh, and verse number 2 says that. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So uh, out, out he goes, and he has to work hard. This is, this is no easy 9 to 5 kind of deal. This was, he was a slave. Now, God had gifted him with administration and oversight later on, Genesis 39, um, we would see that Joseph worked hard 
and he became the, I mean, whatever was going on in the house of uh, Potiphar, he knew. He was in charge. He was the administrator. And he, he was responsible for everything that Potiphar owned. And he did a very good job of it. And because of his hard work, uh, you know, he was honored. Now, unfortunately, he was accused of some things that wasn't true. Uh, but he ended up going to prison for that. Well, falsely. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, but even in prison, he was elevated to positions of authority and the administrator. And then eventually he got the top administrator in all of Egypt. So God was developing those skills at that time. So his hardship then was really going to help in the future. In, in the end, God allowed all that stuff to happen. He ended up in Egypt, Potiphar, prison, palace, uh, to save Egypt and his own family. And, and it's amazing. But that out that pain, there probably would not have been the same Results. I mean, obviously, we don't know all that could have been, but God used that pain to help develop him for the future. There's no doubt about that. And as well, in Joseph's darkest days as such, I mean, I think from the pit to the, anything between the pit and the palace probably were darker days. Uh, but he he had so many setbacks that I think uh, would be very discouraging but he, he allowed those situations to mature him, and I think he started to understand, well, God's got a plan here. God's got something greater for my life. And one of those major setbacks is when Potiphar's wife came against him and accused him, and he ended up getting thrown in prison, uh, falsely accused. Uh, I, I like to watch uh, crime shows where... Uh, there's cases about someone who's been falsely accused, not because I like people being falsely accused, that's not what I'm talking about, but watch how they prove they were falsely accused and things of that nature. It's always intriguing. It's one of my favorite kind of crime uh, stories to watch. Uh, but at any rate, I mean, Joseph did nothing wrong. He was doing everything right as Potiphar wanted him to do. If that excelled Potiphar's expectations. And in verse 20 of chapter 39, and Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison and placed a uh, place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. That's, that's where he ended up. Now, a little while later, uh, a couple new cellmates show up in chapter number 40. I uh, get some new cellmates. Uh, one chief baker, one the chief cupbearer for Pharaoh. And Joseph, by now, had been in place in a uh, position of authority in, in the prison. Again, that administration skills and stuff he has. And he's, a, he's given these two uh, cellmates, these men, as wards of, under his authority. And he has, uh, he's kind. Uh, he could have lord over them. He could have been rude and disrespectful. But look at verse number 6 of chapter 4. Or 40, sorry. Genesis 40, verse 6. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of the Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? Well, I mean, that's compassion. You're in prison. I guess everyone looks sad. I don't know. <laughs> but the reality is he reaches out. He shows that compassionate heart and say, I want to help you. Why are you so sad today? Now, they go on to tell them uh, their stories and things. But can you imagine being in prison and you hear someone else's sob story when you have done everything right, you've honored God, you've done your responsibility to the best of your ability, and then these other guys come in and they give you a sob story that they haven't done anything wrong, blah, blah. I mean, moaning and complaining. I know for myself, I, that would be very hard for me to take. Uh, I mean, it, that would be very difficult, but not Joseph. Uh, he reached out to them. He in essence, gives them a shoulder to cry on. Not only did he listen to their distress, he offered to solve the problem. I'm understanding God gave him ability to interpret dreams. I understand that. But in his darkest moments, Joseph put aside his pain, his lack of whatever he wanted because he was in prison, and he says, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you in the midst of his suffering. Now, Joseph was an amazing man. 
of patience, integrity, and character. Uh, he's human. There's no doubt he made mistakes, but the reality is he shows us so many things. And Brother uh, Mackey mentioned a couple of those things as well on Thursday night. During this time of us self-isolating, 70 plus days, I think now, uh, maybe you're feeling pain. Maybe you're really struggling with some things. Maybe it's economic hardship. Maybe it's relationship hardship. Uh, maybe the lack of socialization uh, is really getting you down. Listen, the Lord has allowed it, and he's going to use it in some way to strengthen you for future ministry. Uh, I understand the way of your serving might have changed right now, but we still can serve. And the Lord's bringing all this stuff together for a reason, to help strengthen you. Joseph went through those things. It helped him refine his gifts. Maybe it's time for you to refine your gifts. Maybe refine how you live in, for Jesus Christ and to develop those abilities God's given you in a greater way. This is a great time for it. Uh, so don't put that aside. And at the same time, if this isolating time has caused you pain and feeling down, you still remember that we have a responsibility to minister to others. That, that responsibility doesn't go away. Now, I know it's different than before, uh, than three months ago. Uh, I, I can't have that same personal person relationship now in the sense of sitting down with somebody. Uh, but there's still lots of ways for us to minister. I can still see someone from a curbside. There's still things you can do. Uh, and we need to do. We need to be provoking onto each other onto good works. Uh, you know, those things don't stop when we're gloomy and when we're down. You might not feel like it. Now, we got to be really careful about our feelings. Uh, I mean, we can feel a certain way, absolutely. Uh, but we need to make sure that we don't give in to our feelings. Uh, because if we did, did that, can you imagine all, how we would be all over the place? You know, there's sometimes I feel like eating four hamburgers. I'm glad I don't give in to that. Could you imagine? I would be in, it wouldn't be good, okay? Uh, the reality is... Tell your feelings to get over it and serve Jesus. Now, that's not to say that you can't confide in someone, say, I'm feeling this way, can you help me? Absolutely, that's totally biblical to do that. And the seek counsel, absolutely do that. But don't allow your feelings to make you hide in your closet as such or underneath your bed. You know, let's go forward. And, and we see Joseph, I'm sure he must have felt those days in prison, he must have felt sad. I mean, he's human just like me and you. I'm sure there was days like that. Uh, but he, he said, no, uh, uh, the Lord's going to give me the strength to go forward. So I think there's some great encouragements in, in that in Joseph's life. So, hey, that pain you're going through, that hardship, you know, the Lord is using it for the future. Develop that gift, that ability that God's given you. Mold it, make it greater for the Lord. Allow him to get involved and just see it go forward. And that, in this day, though it might be difficult for you, definitely serve others. Uh, provoke others into good works. Encourage them. Uh, don't stop doing that. And uh, maybe it's a witness to someone via Skype, via Zoom, whatever it is, or from the curbside, or send write a letter. There's all kinds of things. We just need to kind of think outside the box a little bit and say, hey, I need to serve Jesus Christ, and uh, the Lord's laying something on my heart to do. Uh, so... Don't stop, all right? Don't stop. Uh, even in your time of isolation, we can do some great things for God. And we need to look to him to show us uh, what that is. So I do have some announcements this morning. Uh, some changes in the days ahead on what we've been doing and things. Some of the stuff I'm pretty excited about. And some, some of this, all of this I'm really excited about. So starting June the 17th, which is just a few weeks away now, just over two. Uh, Pastor Matt uh, will start teaching us Bible study on Wednesday night. So the we had our weekday Bible fellowship. So it's kind of like we're kind of reinstating a weekday Bible fellowship. We're not allowed to get together yet. We don't have numbers yet to get together. Um, but we're putting this in place so when it does happen, uh, we... We'll have access, the, the people who come to Pastor Matt's Milton area will be able to come on a Wednesday night. But he's going to tape it. Uh, right now it's going to be live for us. 
uh, and all of us can watch it. We can take the notes. We'll send out all the notes for the Bible study so everyone can follow along. And then as we get back to a more normal schedule where we're allowed to have bigger groups together, uh, Pastor Matt will be here with his group on Wednesday night, and he can broadcast them for all of us. So if you can't make your weekday Bible fellowship again in the future, well, you can watch it. And if you don't feel comfortable on going one, you can still watch it. So the reality is we're not going back from the digital footprint that we have. Uh, so from now on, Bible study will be available. As long as we're having one, you'll be able to catch it on, right now probably use Facebook, but we might change formats or platforms. Uh, but the reality is it's going to be available. So uh, that that's exciting for me, but there's going to be some changes. Uh, so we won't have Tuesday night devotion uh, in lieu of the Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, we'll still, for now, we'll continue going through our missionaries on Thursday nights uh, for encouragement, see what's happening in their part of the world where they're ministering, and get a devotional thought from them. I've been encouraged by it. I hope you've been. I hope you've been able to tune into that. Uh, and we'll hear from some, from more of them in the days ahead. We're not going to be able to hear from every one of our missionaries. Some of our missionaries are in places that their security, their safety could be compromised if we publish something right across the spectrum. Uh, so just so you know, you might not hear from some. Uh, and if you've got any questions, please ask me and I'll help you the best I can. Uh, but we want to protect them and their safety in the places they're at. So you'll hear from a lot, but not every one of them. And as well, uh, now this one is really big for me. Um, so on July, the first week of July, uh, we are starting a podcast called Explore the Word. So every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, there will, they will be available. And they're going to be between 15, 20 minutes long. So this is a different platform than video. This is audio only. Uh, so that length of time, you can listen to it as you're going to work. Uh, on the way home from work, or you're at home, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, you can invite others to subscribe to that podcast. And as we get closer to launching that, I'll give you a lot more details uh, about it. Uh, so that's exciting. And I would ask you to pray for me and for Pastor Matt. Pastor Matt's putting a series together for our Bible study. Myself, uh, putting a lot of effort, uh, making materials to you know speak into a microphone and things and make these podcasts. Uh, I ask you to pray for us uh, as the Lord would bring the right things to our minds as we study and bring the right uh, truths that need to be reminded uh, for all of us uh, to be and even to be solidified in our lives. So I'd ask you to pray about that for us as well. And another change, which is, uh, again, these are good things, is that uh, the church can now accept you're giving via e-transfer. So you don't have to go tithely if you don't want to. You don't have to mail it if you don't want to or drop it off at the church. You can immediately e-transfer it from your account to the church's account. That just got set up this week. I had numerous folks ask about that in the days past. So now it's available. And we'll announce that again tomorrow and let folks know. So some things that are not changing. Okay, so Saturday devotions, the, well, this interaction is not going to change. We're going to keep doing that. Uh, next week, we'll be Pastor Matt's going to be on board. Uh, but the reality is, uh, we'll keep these going on Saturday morning. Nothing on Sunday's changing. Okay, uh, that's all the same as per normal. Uh, so next week, it will just be the Thursday night Bible, uh, or sorry, the devotional and update from one of our missionaries, uh, and then Saturday devotion. And then the week following, the week of June 8th, uh, I'm not sure what day yet, um, Tuesday or Wednesday, I, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, my wife is going to have another ladies Bible study uh, for you ladies on one of those nights of that week, and then we'll have our Thursday night, and then we'll get into our Bible studies on Wednesday nights. And uh, we need to make sure this will be a very good time for you to make sure that all your email addresses are updated with us. Uh, if there's been any changes, uh, because we'll, like I said, we'll be sending out the notes as they're prepared for that uh, Bible study. So I think that's about it for major announcements. Uh, and again, keep you praying for us and praying for each other. Uh, tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. We'll continue looking in John, John chapter 3. We're looking to look at Nicodemus tomorrow and the Lord's encounter and teaching with Nicodemus. 
And uh, so you can go ahead and read John chapter 3. That would be a great thing for you to do today. And at 5 p.m. tomorrow night, we'll continue in Daniel. And tomorrow, it's Daniel in the lion's den. Exciting story. Uh, so you can get uh, reading. Did I say chapter 5? I meant to say chapter 6 if I did say 5. But uh, Daniel chapter 6, you can read that. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with the story. Uh, but good, it's never a bad thing to be reminded of the truths that are there. So I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Enjoy the weather. The sun's starting to peek out. You're going to you're starting to see me bleach out here a little bit. Uh, and praise the Lord for that. Enjoy your day. Uh, and we're so thankful for each and every one of you. We love you. Uh, keep serving Jesus uh, and just keep uh, exploring the word and keep looking to the Lord for direction. Have a great day.